Society of Corona Medicine. So uh, I would like to thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, organizing committee, for inviting me. It is a great conference almost every year. I am coming, and every time, once you might give me some very difficult task, uh, which is not very interesting, or, uh, but uh, I have to do justice. So I have been given the task to talk about the emerging players in the pathophysiology of the metabolic diseases and the, before that simplifying the pathophysiology of metabolic diseases it is basically the most important thing the genetic background then after that the overeating or low calories and decreased physical activity that leads to visceral adiposity first and then that can have different type of other effect including the hormonal changes in the form of the decreasing uh, adiponectin, increasing leptin and working at the level of AP2 receptors upgradation that leads to the other changes and also increasing the inflammatory markers and that leads ultimately to uh, involving the pre fatty acids and the glucose people uptake goes down and all that leads to probably the neuro, the neuro hormonal activation and the chronic inflammation, insulin resistance and all that ultimately leads to the metabolic diseases. That is the basic pathophysiology what we know. But the summary of the metabolic regulation that we talk about, it is either by genetic, genetic level and that is the control transcription of genes or it is at the cellular level by changing the pace of the enzymatic activity at different levels. Signaling molecules have been studied, a lot of signaling molecules we know, and there the investigation is at present most uh, appropriately is being done on the signaling molecules that can change the pace of either the pathophysiology involved or can alter their uh, deposition as well. And the, the regulation of metabolic pathways have also been studied and again, they go again for the signaling molecules at different levels. One interesting area where the research is going on and we have been able to find some way is the around the CHLPP, that is the reversible protein phosphorylation by kinases and phosphatases and that occurs in various metabolic disorders and the studies have revealed that a multifaceted and tightly regulated phosphatase uh, on hormonology is there and that in that area two uh, molecules, two uh, basic pathologies have been studied and uh, mediators have been found, they are the PHLP1 and 2. The PHLPP1 promotes the homey macrophage development through various mechanisms which have been studied. So basically bone cell formation that creates a lot of uh, risk factors and adipocyte specific loss of PLLP2 reduces the adiposity, improves glucose tolerance and attenuates the fatty liver. So this has been seen. So that again signifies that this mechanism is helpful and if we can found some molecules which can act on that, we can reduce the burden of these diseases as well. And not only that, various the PLLP1 and 2 both have been found and their deficiency in cardioprotective and epiloprotective nature has also been seen and their suppression has been found to be beneficial and that can prevent various diseases and also can face down their role in various uh, pathophysics. Jack state pathway has already been known and my previous speaker, Dr. Mimi Krishnan, very beautifully shows that how the, even the prevention and the pace of disease can be reduced by using the molecules, they have, he has shown that molecules are there, which can alter this particular pathophysiology, the channel kinase signaling transducer, and activation of the transcription pathway. That is crucial for transducing signals from a variety of metabolically relevant hormones and cytokines, including the growth hormone leptin and anthropoietin, IL-4, IL-6, and the uh, TLF alpha. So he has also shown that, that the molecules are already there which act on these pathways. So that state signaling pathway serves as an important downstream mediator for a variety of cytokines, 
and the hormones and the growth factors as well. Emerging data show that this pathway is dysregulated in metabolic diseases and that dysregulation can be corrected if we have those molecules and some molecules are already there but they are very costly but other molecules are being developed. So this is a particular pathway, I am not going to detail because of the of time and the that state signaling within immune cells crucially regulates inflammation that is associated with metabolic abnormalities including insulin resistance and obesity. So this pathway is also important in that and that is why the various other molecules are being developed which can affect this particular pathway. That state signaling pathway is a promising therapeutic target for the treatment of obesity, metabolic syndrome and diabetes which we have seen in the previous lecture. Another interesting pathway can be of the retinol binding protein 4. This retinol binding protein 4 is a protein that serves as the specific carrier for retinol in the blood normally and it has been recently described as an adeno adipokine that contributes to insulin resistance in the 84KO mouse model which has been seen that and studied in the mouse model. This, it is known that to meet vitamin A requirement of the tissues, the liver secretes retinol, which is vitamin A alcohol, and into the circulation bound to sole specific carrier protein, the only carrier protein binds it is the retinol binding protein RBP. And I was talking about RBP4. The single known function of this protein is to transport retinol from the hepatic stores to the target tissue. But now, there are more evidences that apart from that, it has some relation and an increase in RBP is correlated with glomerular renal failure, type 2 diabetes, and ischemia. So, not only limiting that particular known form factor, it has some other uh, things to do. And this shows that how this RBP4 can change via the immune cell to produce the more proteins which are involved in the inflammatory region and that can have effect on the islet of cells and then again have the uh, tendency to increase the chances of developing type 2 diabetes and also have impact on the various tissues like liver and the muscle and that can lead to increase in insulin resistance as well. The nutrients are basically definitely very important and that the changes at the level of nutrients is basic pathophysiology that leads to more RAS or increased cytokine levels and that can produce the vascular dysfunction that is known since very very beginning and the genetic So I was talking that the nutrients are basic important and that in excess of nutrition again nutrients can again lead to the level of the cytokine levels and that can produce the vascular dysfunction. Genetic manipulations of course play a vital role and the transcription factors and pro-angiogenic signals that lead to systemic metabolic effects and finally the angiogenesis modulation can also lead to all these changes and the angiogenesis modulation at the level of the genetic level can have the impact and by certain pharmacological agents can be altered and that is more important and development of those factors which can form the new drugs which can act on these pathophysiology. Another in interesting area is the pattern recognition receptors, PRR, pattern recognition receptors they are defined as a key sensor involved in detecting pathogens or danger signals and initiating inflammatory process. So these PRR are pattern recognition receptors are defined as a key uh, sensors and these sensors if we can identify in beginning then we can have the preventive measures and we can control various metabolic diseases and can also reduce inflammation as well. The engagement of the PRR in the initiate immune cells such as the dendritic cells is the also crucial for indirect inst instruction of the ad adaptive immune response. So these PRRs are the pattern recognition receptors are important in that sense.
that they can be given and found in relation to the innate immune cells and like the dendrite cells and they are crucial for the indirect uh, instruction of the various immune responses. Probably these PRR or pattern recognition patterns, they are, they can be found mediated in various pathophysiologies, also in the disease which are involving kidney like nephron development and the sodium and water reabsorption, blood pressure re regulation, the urinary acid acidification, macula densa renin disease and renal fibrosis. Not only that, they have been also instrumental in relation to the changes happening in the brain in the form of blood pressure regulation by the central regulation and the CNS activation as well. The adipose tissue, again the adipose tissue level, they are found to have the blood pressure regulation at the level of fat cells and the insulin sensitivity, they can alter insulin sensitivity and adipogenesis as well. They are, have also been found that they can change the various developments at the development level of the card, cardiac development and can have impact on the heart failure. They have their impact at the placental level as well. Not only that, they have the impact on lipoprotein metabolism in the liver, pancreas, and also at the non atherogenic sclerosis and blood pressure regulation. So again, you see in both all the mechanisms, they have impact on the various metabolic diseases. So they are very important tool and certainly we will get certain molecules which can act on the PRR. So we know that the adequate vascular functions are important and all the ways, all the pathophysiological changes which occur at that level will alter the and create the vascular dysfunction and that can lead to various diseases. The organelles, transporters and interorganelle communication as drivers of the metabolic regulation and cellular homeostasis that is known to us. An effective communication among organelles is essential to cellular health and function whenever certain pathology develops in that and the effective communication fails or the, the cellular health and function will definitely be affected. Self-inducible kinases have also been studied and they are the emerging metabolic regulators and the discovery of liver kinase B1 as an uh, the upstream kinase for MP activated protein kinase led to the identification of several related kinases and a lot of work is being done on these kinases which can have impact on the pathological changes occurring at different levels. Lastly, I will talk about the ceramides. Ceramides are emerging players in cardiovascular disease and their, their basically pathogenetic effects and regulations by diet have been studied in detail how diet can alter these ceramides and they can have the role in development of various pathological disease. The ceramides may be the nexus between the impairment lipid metabolism and CDD. So they are now credited to be important for forming these nexus. The ceramides have been implicated in the pathogenesis of CDD and the other specific ceramide substances have also been proposed as predictor of major adverse cardiovascular events. So ceramides basically as biomarkers to predict cardiovascular events and their use as biomarkers will be in our future role. <laughs> nutritional uh, journals have been, uh, you can have the more study on that. Long chain ceramides especially have been studied and particularly C16 and C18, they are long chain ceramides, they play a pivotal role in the pathogenesis of cardiovascular disease and they can promote atherosclerosis by accumulating within the atherosclerosis plaque where they induce LDL cholesterol aggregation and oxidation thereby contributing to oxidative stress. So one thing where we have limited drug only statin in that particular area again they can be the drugs can develop on the basis of these basic mechanisms. Ceramides improve the macrophage polarization towards an M1 probe inflammatory phenotype via the activation of the various inflammatory markers or inflammatory uh, pathogenic 
pathways and they can activation they can cause activation of inflammatory markers as well so long chain ceramides are implicated in the prevalence of obesity and type 2 diabetes as well by promoting the hypothalamic dysfunction and insulin resistance at the central level so this is the last one i will end here uh, through other markers have been studied like the mineralocorticoid receptors and also the mineralocorticoid receptors and the, uh, the endothelial cells new players in obesity and related metabolic disorders a lot of literature is available on that the time does not permit to talk more about that but exosomes are also coming players in the field of the newer pathogenic uh, pathogenic markers thank you thank you very much